Um, hello everyone, my name is Allison Borthman and I am here to talk about Live Talk to End of Life for Drupal 7. A little bit about me and why I'm here talking to you about this. I am a senior software engineer at HeroDex. I've been in tech for over six years now. Um, kind of coming full circle being here presenting to you today because I started out um, in the government I had a PHP shop, so coming here and uh, getting to talk about Drupal is a lot of fun for me. Uh, I started getting involved in the Drupal community about a year ago. It's been a lot of fun getting to come to conferences and getting to talk to all of you guys. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Additionally, I am the tech team lead for Drupal 7 NES, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that means. Okay. Alright, who is your devs? Um, we were founded in 2018. We specialize in post end of life support. So we got to start supporting AngularJS um, after it went end of life. We've since expanded to um, a couple of other, a couple, a um, handful of other ones, um, including Angular, Vue, and now Drupal 7. Um, we were trusted by over 600 companies, and we really make sure we try to um, work with maintainers of the open source software that we work with and that we pick up at the end of life. We really try to give back to the community as much as we can. Okay. Quick shout out to all of our sponsors. Very happy to be here. January 5th, 2025. Um, this date seemed very far um, about a year ago. I was like, this day is never going to come and it's never going to reach us. But now it's very close and um, we have a lot of things we still need to talk about. For those who maybe don't recognize it, this is our Drupal 7 end of life date. This is when the security team is going to stop supporting Drupal 7 um, and then it will be officially end of life. So I want to talk about the timeline of Drupal 7 for a little bit. Um, Drupal 7 was released in 2011, uh, and as you can see, it's still obviously not end of life quite yet, but in that time since 2011, Drupal 8 was released, then Drupal 9 was released, and Drupal 10 was released. Um, 8 and 9 are already end of life, and I'm sure Drupal 10 will have an end of life coming up pretty, here, pretty soon. So Drupal 7 has managed to outlive almost three other versions now. Additionally, about a year ago, I came and I presented at GovCon 2023. And at the time, there were over 300,000 sites still reporting that they were on Drupal 7. Um, last year, a lot of people were like, well, we'll just migrate, right? Uh, we won't, Drupal 7, no one will still be on it. We won't need to talk about it. We won't need to worry about it. Well, as of this month, there are still 296,000 sites reporting that they are in Drupal 7. And these are the ones that are just reporting. You have to opt in to reporting. So this number is likely um, a little bit higher. So, sorry. Um, migrating away from Drupal 7, what happened and why are people still on it? Um, so Drupal 7 to 9, 8, 9, 10, whatever one you want to migrate to, it's not an easy migration. As most people know, it's basically a major architecture change. Um, they change things, they introduce symphony. Um, basically, everyone pretty much understands that it's a complete rewrite, and it can take a lot of time. Um, the fact that it takes a lot of time and complexity also means that it takes a lot of money, and so sometimes it's hard to budget for that. Um, for a lot of companies, the opportunity cost just may not be worth it. If um, they don't have this site doing a lot, or they may be planning on making their site deprecated or not using it anymore in a couple years, it doesn't make sense to migrate, spend the money, and then turn it off in 2025, 2026. Um, and a lot of people in the past year I've talked to, they just really enjoy working with Drupal 7. Uh, since it was such a big change, a lot of people preferred the Drupal 7. So, kind 
couple of documents, the Drupal Association and this article talking about preparing for Drupal 7. They're really trying to make sure people uh, know what to do and the steps that are needed to take. Um, additionally, uh, and we'll talk about some of the points in this article as well, um, but talking about navigating the end of life and the options that you have. Cool. So we got two numbers here. We got 296,000 sites and 94 business days. Why do these matter? So if January 5th is our deadline, that means we have 144 calendar days. Um, since most people here would agree that working weekends and holidays kind of sucks, that means we're down to about 94 business days. Opria estimates that migrations for D7 um, to like a D10 site take anywhere from 16 to 30 weeks, which is 112 to 210 days respectively. So if we look at this, um, if you were to work some weekends, probably some holidays, and the migration took the minimum amount of effort that Opria uh, predicts, you would have about 32 days until um, the end of life event. So you would make it. You'd have to start your migration like yesterday, but um, there's still a small chance that you can make this migration work. Um, on the minimum average and the 94 business days, you'd already at this point be 18 days over the end of life event. But since minimum, and let's look at the maximum here. So 144 calendar days, higher than average um, migration effort, you would be unsupported for about two months, 56 days, uh, where you'd be out of compliance on unsecure software and leaving you vulnerable to attackers. And then obviously, the higher numbers on both ends, you don't want to work weekends and holidays, and you have a very big migration ahead of you, you're looking at four months plus of being on unsupported software. So the question is, are you out of time? When it comes to migrating, some of the concerns are obviously security, compliance, and compatibility. When we talk about it, I mean, there's always the more lax concerns, like maybe you miss out on new features, you don't get as much involvement from the community, and those things are as important as are important as well. But when it really comes down to it, the security, compliance, and compatibility are what most organizations care about and are worried about. Um, security. I'm not going to sit here and tell you why security is important because I'm sure you all know. Um, these are a couple of headlines that I pulled from the Drupal Get In One and Drupal Get In Two that impacted um, Drupal Seven and other versions, I believe. And this is going to be another reality, a reality again once Drupal Seven goes into life in January because the security team won't be there to fix um, fix these issues and you won't have any new updates to protect yourself. Compliance. We are at a government conference. Um, compliance is a big topic that we uh, hear a lot when it comes to government agencies. You know, we have FedRAMP, PCI, and HIPAA. Um, they all require instant response and mediation, um, and they really strive for industry standard regulations. So security is not enough in most cases. You also need to make sure you are compliant. 94 business days. You have 94 business days left to figure out a plan. Um, and even if migration is the option and the choice that you want to go with, you still um, probably won't make that deadline. So what can you do? That's where I am here to talk about Drupal 7 and so our initiative for Drupal 7, um, we really aim to, to meet the community, uh, make sure we integrate with them, see where they are at, and talk to them and make sure, you know, we talk to contributors, we talk to, make sure we understand your concerns. Um, the Drupal 7 NES is a direct fork for Drupal, 
it's not a migration, it's not like a switch and then a break. Uh, we forked 7101 and have been distributing that out um, as a, to our customers. Um, additionally, we spent a lot of time with Drupal security team members to talk about their security process. We wanted to make sure that you guys were getting the same standards that you were uh, used to. So we modeled our security response for people after what they had in place. So we spent a lot of time talking about them, learning them, making diagrams, making sure that we understood everything that goes into it today so we could do it in the future. We also have decided to do all um, modules that are create solutions, but we want to make sure that you know, Drupal is nothing without its modules, so it'd be one thing if we just supported core, but we also need to make sure that your favorite modules that are required are being used as well. Cool. So, some advantages of D7 and yes. Obviously, you get to stay on D7. Um, some, for some people, that will be enough. Some people just need a D7 site that's secure and compliant, and that's what they'll do with it. Others, we would be just a stopgap. You know, it allows you to remain compliant while you plan your migration. Um, and then you can migrate on your own timeline. Then it's not this 94 days and you're out of compliance. Um, if it needs to take a year or two years, however long, uh, you will be set with us. We also provide SLAs. These are the biggest thing. Uh, we make sure we are compliant with all of those government agencies. Um, and standards, so that's a big thing. We always want to make sure that we have mediation for any security issue that will arise. And most importantly, we are a drop-in replacement. Uh, we've tested out over, we've tested out three different ways, Composer, Drush, and Manual, um, and they've worked really well. So we are pretty proud to say that we can meet you wherever you are at with your code today. So I will have questions if anyone has any questions. Yeah. So I've been coming to conferences for I don't know eight or nine years. And if you go back to your from your original slides, you showed the timeline. Yeah. Well, we keep being told this time it's proof and seven and the like. Um, well, for starters, I think when they did do that last time, we weren't so close to end, right? So, like, it's, what, four or five months out now? Um, but also, we have been talking with the Drupal Association, the Drupal security team. Like, they're just done. Um, they want to move on and focus on moving Drupal onto new and better things. And they can't do that if they continue to support Drupal 7. And there are people like Hero Devs um, that are stepping up to take over the reins from the security team. Okay, thank you. Yeah. What have you seen in the range, depending on site size, for how long it's dropping the pace of Um. So, typically, what we say is whatever it takes for you to upgrade to like. 7.101 or 7, they haven't released 7102 yet, but whatever it takes to upgrade to the next version is what it would take for you to upgrade to our version or switch over to our version. Anything else? Yeah. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it was something called Backdrop. Backdrop? Is, is that still a thing, or do they go out of business, or what happens to that initiative? Backdrop is still a thing. Um, the best way it was explained to me was that it is running in parallel to Drupal. It's not really a part of the Drupal like internal ecosystem anymore. Um, it is still a fork of Drupal 7, but it's changed so much that it's not Drupal itself anymore. Um, and so even to get to backdrop, you would have to do a migration and change over your modules and everything at this point. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you guys for listening. Appreciate it.